Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively into a festivist week, and, um, you know, because I saw some old pictures of David Modell uh, carrying a trophy, I think I found them around here. I'll pull it out before the segment's over uh, on the set here. You know what? I'm going to pull it out right now because it'll, be, it'll make it a more fun segment with this, uh, this next guest we have. But this is what happened two weeks after we went to Nashville 20 years ago. David Modell carrying the uh, Lombardi Trophy. Uh, a friend of mine took that shot, and I'm going through some pictures that were in frames, big old pictures. And um, this is from uh, January the 29th, 2001. Brian Lease will tell you where he was that day because we were all, uh, you know, in this thing together. But, boy, Ravens and Titans and what happened to us last year, it's making me go through my Anthony Mitchell file, Brian. You know what I mean? Like, I, this has become like a real rivalry and a real disdain. And when I talk to the people in Nashville, they remember Eddie George and Ray Lewis too. <laughs> yeah, I remember it. And we need to get back to that kind of winning, uh, winning playoff games. I can't believe it's been six years. I heard that, that number on the radio today. It doesn't seem like that long, but six years since we won a playoff game. But uh, we'll get that monkey off our back this Sunday for sure. Well, favored on the road. And I mean, you can speak to being down in Nashville, a bomb went off, uh, you know, like we've all been there. Uh, you know, I've been up and down second Avenue as well. Uh, many, many times the big party we threw 10 years ago at Graham central station was right where the bomb went off. And I'm avoiding it this time. I mean, I love the memories I have and these pictures. And it's one of the reasons I'm like, kind of looking through the pictures because I've been to Nashville so many times and had fun and the Ravens have played there the, the Tony Saragusa Monday night game afterward at the at the goal line and then McNair comes and plays here in Mason and Samari and you know it's been a rich tradition but I'm taking this one off because of COVID and because of the bomb and just because like I think they're gonna win this week right I mean I, I feel like you do like I I have a flight to Kansas City next week I think they're gonna win this week and I don't know why I'm so confident other than the fact that they can't tackle, because I did witness that on Sunday, but I really like the way the Ravens have used this last five weeks. It's been very impressive to me after COVID, after Pittsburgh, the way the offense has played. And, and I know it's been playing co down competition. That's cool. But they've done what they're supposed to. They look like a complete football team again. Yeah, they, they've gotten back to what they – should have been doing all along, uh, and that's running the ball, consistently running the ball and not hitting that panic button. Um, as long as we do that, you know, this Sunday, you know, use the easy button and run versus hitting the panic button and throwing, I think we're going to be just fine. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to blow them out. You know, well, I, I think the blowout is possible if we don't turn the ball over, we don't kick the ball around, uh, going on fourth and a foot and not making it. You know, the kinds of things that happened last year that piled up early. And for Lamar to have to pound sand after the Chargers, and then again last year, for all of these guys, you mentioned six years. You know, we, we go back, it feels like five minutes ago that we were in New Orleans. I was watching a college football game, you know, like getting my own memories of New Orleans and the, the march and the lights going out and all that. And it feels like five minutes ago. This thing feels like five minutes ago, and it's now 20 years ago, right? But um, I, I, a lot of these guys haven't won. You, you know what I mean? Mark Andrews, Orlando Brown, you just go, go, go through the roster. Marlon Humphrey. These guys haven't won a playoff game at all. You and I remember what that felt like as fans. Like, oh, you know, we win a lot around here. Well. These guys lose, and, and Marlon was sort of, you know, sour last year. I remember being in his locker. Again, it's a picture that made the circuit after when he's got his sunglasses on uh, with sure. me in the background about him chirping about, you, you know, not winning in January and choking and all of these things. This is what adds up, and I've talked to these people in Nashville all week about it. They got the better end last year, and even when things haven't gone well for them and – they're sort of a run first team, but more of a balanced team. And Tannehill, you know, is pretty good. I, I, you know, I think better than, than, than advertised to some degree. And they've had problems on their O line. But everyone has said when they have fallen behind, they still run the football. And it's the reason they're still alive. Is even last week when things went wrong, they run the football because it's what they do well. The Ravens need to take that away. And at some point, tackling Derrick Henry. No matter how good Lamar is, no matter how we go zim zam, you know, 10, 12 plays, 7 points, 7 points. At some point, you got to tackle Derrick Henry. And until we prove we can do that consistently or get ahead by so much, to your point, to blow him out that he's not a factor, 
this is a 7, a 10, a 12, 13-point game. He's going to be running the ball late into the afternoon, and you're going to have to tackle him. Yeah, I, I think you're right there. I think the key in, in tackling him is, is getting penetration up front because his deal is he gets a few yards of a head start, you know, and once you got that guy barreling down on you, nobody wants to tackle him. And if you do want to tackle him, it's so difficult. He's just so big. It's ridiculous. And he's got speed, too. So the key is going to be Wolf and Campbell and, and Williams getting a little bit of penetration just to kind of at least make him stutter you know, or get, get something around his ankles some kind of way before he gets that head of steam rolling downhill. Uh, that, that's that's going to be absolutely vital all game long, not just three quarters, all four. Well, I, I'm turned on by the health of the team uh, and the way they're playing. And if they lose, you know, a fair fight, if they lose a 45-42 game because they can't tackle him and they can't tackle us and, you know, we miss a field goal and they make one or they block something or they, you know, force a fumble, whatever would happen that we would lose a game like that, like kind of like the one that was played here two months ago. You know, I, I don't think that's good, but if they get behind 28 to six in the, in the second quarter, like last year, and it's one of those kind of games, that's a different kind of way to go out. And I don't think there's any harm in going out this week, but I think it, the franchise is going to have real questions here when they're not winning games in January. And this isn't like a typical road game. You know, there's going to be 15,000 people in the stadium there. I mean, enough to make it sound like an old Skipjacks game, I guess, <laughs> or whatever. But, but I, I would say for the franchise to be playing well, healthfully. Look, if Pittsburgh or Cleveland go out, Look, Cleveland's got a COVID. The coach can't be on the sideline, right? So if they lose, it's built in. Pittsburgh hadn't been playing well. Buffalo better not lose this week. I mean, the way they've been playing, right? And I don't see Kansas City sitting at home as, like, the greatest thing. It wasn't so great for us. I think they woke up on the wrong side of bed last year, as I remember it after sitting around as well. They didn't really play all that well. They played well in the second half after they fell behind the games. But they're a team that can fall asleep. So for me to think we can go out to Kansas City – and we're not intimidated by any. We, we played all these teams, you know. It's about winning now. They've won a whole lot of Seattle and Los Angeles and Cleveland. and you know, They've won games, okay, but they haven't won this game. And, you know, for me, that they, they're trending in the right direction for me to feel good about them. And not that they weren't 14-2 and two or that things went wrong a month ago. I like who they are right now. I really do. Yeah, I do too. I think there's a big difference like between this year and last year and that last year it just seemed like everything just came easy to them. And then all of a sudden, once they faced a little bit of adversity, they didn't know how to react because they had faced no adversity throughout the year. I mean, every they were just steamrolling, you know, all along. Yeah, I this love year, Lamar's body language when they're winning. You know, when they're losing. <laughs> right. You know, I'd, I'd like to see a little more Flacco and a little less of that, right? Yeah, I mean – that's the difference. Like I say, this year they face adversity with the losses and COVID, that situation. So they face a lot of adversity. And now, you know, they, they are genuinely peaking at the right time. And, and I think they're more focused now. They know what's in front of them. They know what happened last year. They know what happened this year with, with you know, the, the Titans, you know, gathering around on the logo and, uh, hopefully, and I'm sure Har Harbaugh is like showing pictures and video of that. So they, they got a little extra something for them this this week. By the way, the Titans uh, do that everywhere they go. All the Tennessee people well, have told me that. that. That's fine, but this was the first time we've seen it in our house, you know. So oh, that, that won't stand. Problem. I mean, that didn't go well. John didn't like that. No, and I love the fact that he went out there all by himself. He didn't look for anybody to come with him. He's like, I'll take them all on. I don't care. So, we'll <laughs> Somebody see. said Rabel's bigger than he is. It was Blaine Bishop, I think. But, you know, that comes from the other side. Brian Lee is here roofing by Elite. They, they do roofs, and when he's not doing that, he's got his, a turtle hat rock in there and uh, will be ready for all sorts of things. You, know, you are, and I brought this up before because you're kind of unique. I've run into you on the road. You're a bit of a road warrior. I kind of thought you would have might have gone to Cincinnati over the weekend. I, I – I have decided not – I just don't think there will be any fun for me in Nashville. I'm not going to be an idiot running around without a mask, hooting Annie and, and, and honking. It's just not my, my jam where my wife is right now, the bomb going off. And the fact that I really do think they're going to win, and if they're going to lose, I didn't want to be there. But I know you love the road too. I mean, no Cincinnati for you, though. Close though, right? 
Yeah, no, no Cincinnati because I figured uh, we'd make the playoffs, we'd beat Cincinnati. So, and I was hoping that it would be Tennessee that we'd be playing, which that that was a little close. <laughs> Houston almost ruined that for me, but thank God uh, Tennessee and they they came through and set it up quite nicely, so we can get our revenge game in and and beat the crap out of them in their house. You think so, the Colts game wouldn't be point. revenge? No, We've come no, a long way no. on that, haven't we? Yeah, we're, we're done with that. <laughs> That's over. <laughs> yeah, you know what's crazy for me, and I've talked about this earlier in the week, that uh, it feels like a long time ago that I was watching games on Sunday now all of a sudden, you know, uh, as we're looking forward to triple headers, you know, right around the corner, and I'm getting my Royal Farms chicken together, my Pizza John's, I'm getting all worked up. But I, I was watching that Pittsburgh-Cleveland game late in the day, and I found myself rooting for the Steelers. Like, I don't like the Browns. I don't like Baker Mayfield. <laughs> and I've just decided, like, I don't want anything good to happen to them. So uh, <laughs> the fact that even if the Steelers win this week, we wind up seeing them somewhere along the, the life's pathway. I guess if the Steelers win, they'll go to Buffalo and we'll go to Kansas City. And, and you know, that'd be an interesting little weekend next weekend that we could wind up back in Pittsburgh if you know, they take care of business. But uh, Pittsburgh's got its hands full against the Browns this week. But I have in the division now, it's turned on me that I don't want to see – the Browns prosper <laughs> and that's that's mean of me because they've never really done anything to us other than roll over <laughs> and give us their football team and bitch about it but I, I don't you know I, <laughs> far be it from me to side with Pittsburgh in this one <laughs> experience I had with that fan base uh when we played them on Monday night I was there for that game and they were not too kind to us <laughs> they they were they were uh they were letting us have it before we even got into the stadium. Uh, That's Cleveland, they, though. That's Yeah, I, I had dog yeah, biscuits we'll thrown see. at me in the early days up in the upper deck. Yeah, I, I'd been there. I was there last year, and I didn't get that kind of reception. But I think what it was was they were on a roll, and they think they thought that they were going to, you know, hand us a pretty pretty tough loss, and, and they were ready to take control of the north and all this, and, and they were letting us have it. But – Things turned out a little bit differently. Well, dude, time. if we win the Super Bowl or if we're still playing, if you and I are together two weeks from now and we're playing football, right, if, it, if that's the case, and just for the record, I remember last year you saw me in the purple rope lights. I bought those in 06. I told Jared Johnson yesterday, I'm like, dude, I'm retiring those. I brought it. <laughs> two times they've been out during buy time where I've really, like, utilized them, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just going low key. I'm treating this like every other football game this week. But, you know, I, I guess through all of this, we get worked up, we get into it. This is why we're fans, right? I mean, even during a pandemic, this is the only thing we've had to really hold on to. Uh, you know, saw some other folks this week, I said, man, if we lose this week. Like, what's the next fun thing that gets to happen in the middle of a plague? You know, Pearl Jam's not coming to town anytime soon or whatever. And, and you know, for me, going to a game next week will be a little cathartic and whatever if I go to Kansas City. The Buffalo thing, I just thought, like, I'll just get in the car and drive. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I felt like I would treat Buffalo. I felt like it's been a while since I've driven to Buffalo, as long as it's not snowing sideways, which it could be. Um, I, I felt like I would go and do that. But this week, I'm feeling like I need the week off. But the Cleveland experience for you, you went to that game. I canceled my flight the day before. Canceled my flight from going nowhere. Uh, and I didn't go. And as I'm sitting there in bed, I swear to you, I'm thinking, I've been to Cleveland 40 effing times, 25 times for – 21 times for games. And the one time I don't go, this happens. So if your worst memory is having Browns fans pissed off at you, I remember they would throw dog biscuits at me when it's all they had to do. I mean, we were going to kick their ass 41 to 10, you know, back in the right. early days, you know. Like there was – they were only there to yell at me, right, and yell at us and our bus trip sure. coming in through. You've been to Hall of Fame lately? No, I haven't. It's been a while. So you didn't do Ogden or Re – you didn't do any of those? No, no, I didn't do those. Wow, yeah. that's shocking mm -hmm. to me because you're such a super fan. But um, I would tell you this, it was a different kind of experience 10 years ago. They've made it more like Disneyland now, right? Like it's okay. a hell of a campus. But we used to do that trip the first 15 years that we went out there. and We won, what, 13 of them or whatever that one year they sure. skunked us. But every year we would take that trip and we would go out there and we would Saturday spend the day at the Hall of Fame and roll through and drink some beer back when I was single, see some girls in Cleveland back in the day. <laughs> and, you know, that, that was that kind of trip for us. Nashville's the best trip in the league, though, right? Like, literally, we would all agree with that. Yeah, I mean, well, to be quite honest, I was there last week 
uh, on business. It was the first time I was in Nashville since 98. And that oh, was wow. well back then. So I've never been there for a game, but I will agree that the town itself, it's a fun, fun town. It really is. Well, I so mean, I'm for you, if you hadn't been it. there in 20 years, it was like going yeah. to Harrisburg then, and it's like going to Manhattan now, right? <laughs> yeah. It really is. Like that. Brian, talk about what you do, uh, getting on roofs this time of year, how it's important. And, and I guess in between snowstorms or in between ice storms or in between all of that is a good time to say, hey, man, if you're feeling something happening or somebody hasn't been on your roof in a while, it's a good time to get somebody on your roof. Um, you know, and I think especially in these times where you're not thinking about it, the last thing you need in the middle of a plague is a leak, right? Absolutely. This is the time of year where basically, you know, we, we kind of do maintenance repairs, things like that. We don't really want to do any replacements. Um, some companies will do that. I, I advise against that because it's, especially with residential, when you're dealing with shingles, you need some heat in order for those shingle tabs to kind of stick together. Right now you replace a the roof, they're going to wind up blowing off potentially and you're asking for trouble. So right now we're trying to help people out and just, you know, getting them through the winter, you know, with doing a repair here or there. And, and then uh, if they need a replacement, taking care of that in the spring or summer. Uh, that's interesting. I, yeah. I think about that and, and, and gutters and ice and debris, like all of that is, it, it's how bad things happen, literally, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, so there's like not this, brushing your teeth, kind of, sort of, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to maintain every day. So one of the phenomenons in, in you know waterproofing, roofing, gutters, that kind of thing is a thing called ice damming. And what can happen is if your leaf, your gutters are clogged up with leaves and haven't been cleaned out in a while, and then you get some snow and it melts doesn't have anywhere to go it's going to start backing up underneath your shingles and then eventually into your house uh, i've seen some real some real hard shows so gutter cleaning is absolutely essential even if you think you haven't had any problems recently you're, you're just around the corner well nobody's you know, been up on their happen. roof lately right? right on their own roof right. right literally that that's that's part of the deal is we see our teeth every day and i'm a little syrup before I had something here. I think we had chia seeds going over in there to begin with. But a uh, reminder to, uh, to take a look at your roof. Uh, tell everybody how to find you. I'm going to pull your website up so everybody can, can uh, take a look. And uh, you're more than just a Ravens maniac, how long have you been doing roofs? Oh, since 1987. Wow. All right. Just a little so, while. <laughs> so you've seen everything. Oh, I've seen it all, done it all, been there, done that for sure. Nice, nice. Roofing by Elite is roofingbyelite.com. We tell you about them here at WNST. Uh, on a residential level, any job, I mean, I, I don't remember always thinking, like, I grew up in Dundalk, little home, grow home, whatever, little house attached to five other houses. Um, we'd always have a roofer in the alley doing something because we had 50 houses, on the, you know, uh, on, on a street. Uh, and we had a roofer that lived down the street that was always current favorite. Doing, I never knew who to trust, where to call, or whatever. For you, even the smallest jobs, yeah? Absolutely. Like I say, we'll do a repair all the way to a full replacement uh, and everything in between. doesn't matter the size. Uh, gutter cleaning, we'll do that as well. All uh, right, man. So you're we'll the man from the road. Trip. You did all the games last year. Mm -hmm. Buffalo, Kansas City, are you thinking in, along those terms? Um, as far as what? Going to a game? Or are you going to try to go to Tampa? Oh no, I'm I'm going to this one in Nashville, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna save it up for the Super Bowl in Tampa. Nice, nice. Well, if you're going to the game, enjoy yourself. By all means, stay safe down there. Uh, are you good luck or bad luck in January? I need to ask you this before we send you down there. A hundred percent good luck. You weren't last year. None of us were. We thought we were all good luck last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, man, always appreciate the visit. Uh, you know, uh, pack light and uh, bring us back a victory, and uh, I'll bring you back some barbecue next week if things work out right. Absolutely. 34-20. Remember uh, that score. Uh, okay. 34-20. Uh, Two touchdowns. That's, uh, that, to me, feels like a really comfortable day for me at 3.30. I do not need consternation, constipation, <laughs> irritation. I don't need any of that. I've loved these blowouts the last couple weeks. You know, the Cleveland game kind of got me on the wrong – you know, uh, Lamar in the, not on the field. At, at that moment when you're in the stadium and I'm here at home with my cat watching the game, I'm like, man, this is so 2020. And now all of a sudden we're into a new year and we're feeling like, wow – Got some new life and some new peppers. It's a winnable football game. Have a safe trip down there, okay? Thanks, Nestor. I'll talk to you.
Brian Leach joining us here at Roofing by Elite. Joining us, and uh, you can find them at roofingbyelite.com. You can find him usually at a Ravens game. You can find him in Nashville this week. I'm going to take this one off. We have been talking to all sorts of folks from this rivalry, throughout this rivalry, with the, uh, uh, with the, the Ravens and the Titans, and before that, the Allers. Had Blaine Bishop on, Jared Johnson. You can find all of that. Matt Stover, all out at baltimorepositive.com.